sewing. Sewing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that in the Bible. No. <laughs> what about Dorcas? Dorcas? Dorcas sewed, didn't she? Did she? Yeah. Oh, you got me there. <laughs> you anyway, thanks. Please pray for us. Christians are, Christians are to love their neighbours. Christians are commanded to love other people, other image bearers of God. You and I are part of the human race, a very privileged part of God's creation. We're image bearers of God. We're made in the image and likeness of an almighty God. You and I know what it is to live, don't we? We know what it's like to be loved and we know what it's like to love others. Because God is love. And we're able to love. Animals aren't able to love. Animals, the animal kingdom can't love. It's not made in the image and likeness of God. I mean, you, you, can, you can give your favorite pet dog or cat attention. And you can pour as much love and attention into your favorite pet dog or cat or goldfish as you want. But it can't love you back. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. Dogs don't love you. Cats don't love you. Goldfish, your favorite pet budgie, doesn't love you. They're incapable of love, the animal kingdom. But you and I, you and I are image bearers of God. We're a privileged part of God's creation. We know what it's like to love. And we're moral. Another thing, another thing that sets us apart from animals is that we're, we are moral beings. We know right from wrong, don't we? You know it's wrong to murder, and I know it's wrong to murder, because we're moral beings. God has created us that way. It's not that we're very intelligent and very good people. It's that we're made in God's image and likeness. So we know what it's like to live, and we know right from wrong. Your favorite pet budgie, or dog, or cat, doesn't know right from wrong. Animal kingdom, the animal kingdom doesn't know right from wrong. It's not made in the image and likeness of God. They're just dumb animals. Your dog doesn't love you back. Your dog can bite the hand to feed it, can't it? That's not very loving. It doesn't know right from wrong. But you and I are God's masterpiece, my friend. The good news is today that your life isn't meaningless or purposeless. Your life has purpose and meaning. You were created in the image and likeness of God. You're God's masterpiece. The God of the Bible, the only God who exists, you're his masterpiece. And that's why the devil hates you so much. The devil, that vile creature who's a murderer from the beginning. There's no truth in him. He's the father of lies, the Bible describes him. And he'll take you to hell with a smile on your face if you let him now, the devil hates you because God loves you my friends God has a great love for his creation God is love and he made you in his image and likeness what a sad sad thing when a, when a fellow image bearer rejects the gospel rejects what God did on that cross 2000 years ago and chooses hell chooses to suffer the wrath of God forever and ever rather than worship him what a sad demise my friends what a sad state of affairs that you live a short existence in this world clinging to the things in this world and refuse to come to the cross of Jesus Christ and die and stand before an angry God the same God who made you the same God who fashioned you in your mother's womb you are fearfully wonderfully made you see you are an image bearer of God your life isn't an accident. And you tell people, if you tell people, and we are, we're telling people, well, we, were, we just come from the animal kingdom. You know, Richard Attenborough said so on, on telly. 
Don't follow the science, my friend. Don't follow that kind of science. You tell people that they came from the animal kingdom, they evolved from primordial soup, a big bang, and then a uh, uh, process of evolution. A single-celled amoeba in a puddle of mud, and then a, a, a tadpole and a frog, and then eventually us. You tell people that they came from animals, what are they going to do? They're going to behave like animals, aren't they? Jesus Christ can put you, put you in your right mind, my dear. He can save you. He can save you from that anger. Put you in your right mind. I've never had a wife, my dear. You think I'm a wife, Peter? I've never had a wife. How can I be a wife, Peter, if I've never had a wife, you silly woman? I've never had a wife. Listen, my dear, I know if I've been married before, and I haven't. I think I'll remember that. I've never had a wife. I don't know what you... I haven't... How can I be a wife, Peter, if I've never had a wife? I'm trying to reason with you. You're so blind with anger, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I've never been married, my dear. <laughs> what do you do with that? This is what happens. It's either insanity or God, my friends. It's either blind rage or submission to God. Surrender. Wave the white flag. God commands all people everywhere to wave the white flag and live for Him instead of yourself. You live for self. It'll only end up in a devil's hell. You continue to live for all the stuff in this world, all the materialism, the money, the success, the praise of men, the relationships. You can do that. You can live a, a shallow existence like that. But it won't end well when you stand before God. God killed his son. He crucified his son. The Bible says he pleased God to kill his son. And your unbelief, your lack of trust in what Jesus Christ did on that cross to save you from an angry God, your lack of belief in that is what's going to condemn you. You're already condemned, you see. So cry out to God. Call upon Him today while He's near. Today, if you hear God's voice, don't harden your hearts. Your heart's been hardened enough. Where has your sin ever gotten you? What has your sin ever done for you except make you miserable? Bitter and twisted. Filled with hatred. You see, you live for the things in this world. The pleasure of sin, it's only for a short while. You can live for the things in this world, but it doesn't satisfy, does it? Nothing in this world can satisfy the human soul. You weren't created to find satisfaction and fulfillment in anything in this world. You were created by God, Jesus Christ, and for Him. You're not your own property, you see. None of us are. I'm not. You were created, you were given life by God at His appointed time. You were given life by Him and for Him. That's the meaning of life. The meaning of life isn't to live for pleasure and fun and all this stuff on offer. That's not the meaning of life. You can't find meaning and satisfaction for your soul in those things, you see. You can have it all. That's why Jesus said, He said, what will it benefit anybody who gains the whole world and loses soul in hell. You can have it all. You could be the richest person in Workington, couldn't you? Have a nice house at Stainburn. You can have it all. You can, your kids could be doing well at university and successful. You can have it all, my friends. <clears throat> but what will it benefit you if you have it all and lose your soul in hell? If you have all the money in the world, what's that going to help you? People have all the money in the world, don't they? Some people some people have trillions in the bank. They're still miserable. They're still unsatisfied. They're still bitter and twisted and unforgiving. You see, you were made by God and for God and to live for Him. 
That's the meaning of life. And until you come to him on his terms, until you surrender, wave the white flag and live for him, the one who bled and died in agony on that cross for his enemies, for people who've gone their own way and done what's right in their own eyes and disobeyed his commands. He died for people like that. He died for murderers. He died for drunkards. He died for people who've had sex outside of marriage. All sex outside of marriage. One man, one woman is a sin against God, you see. Jesus said, have you not read in the beginning God made them male and female? Why did he make them male and female? For this reason a man, a man shall leave his mother and father, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. That's God's definition of marriage right there, my friends. And any other definition of marriage is a mirage. It's a mirage, my friends. God doesn't change his mind. He's the same God yesterday, today, that he is forever. And the only way that you can find true, lasting peace and joy is when you wave the white flag of surrender and live for Jesus Christ instead of yourself. We're very selfish creatures, aren't we? Women commit adultery and cheat on their husbands because they're selfish people. It's all about me, me, me. Very self-serving creatures, aren't we, at heart? Jesus said there's none good, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Every one of us, we're sin-loving creatures. We drink in iniquity like water. And men as well, men cheat on their wives. Men commit adultery and cheat on their wives, don't they? Because they're very selfish. We're self-serving creatures. But God knows your heart. You might be able to fool mankind think you're a nice person. What is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. God knows your heart, my friends, so don't die and go to a devil's hell. Don't lose your soul. Jesus Christ, he died on that cross for all those who are living for themselves. So that they stop living for themselves and live for him instead. It might only be for a few weeks, my friend. You don't know when God is going to take your life. But you do know he's going to, don't you? It's outside of your control. Nobody leaves this world any sooner or later than God's appointed time. Your time and my time is in God's hands. And the only thing that he'll accept as payment for your sin is what Jesus Christ did on that cross. The only work that God will accept as payment for your sin is what his son did on that cross. The blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. So cry out to him. Call upon him today. Today if you hear God's voice, don't harden your hearts. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today, my friends. You can have true joy, true peace, true lasting peace. You can know the meaning of life. You can come and be reconciled to your creator brought back you can be reconciled to the God who is perfect pure and holy he'll accept you based upon what Jesus Christ has done on that cross why would you wait a moment longer you're not guaranteed another lung full of air are you so cry out to God today he says come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest you can have rest. You can have it all. You can have eternal life. Heaven. It's for those people who love God, you see. Heaven is for people who love God. Eye has not seen nor ear heard, the Bible says. Nor the heart of man imagined what God has laid up for all those who love Him. Do you love God? Do you have any modicum of love in your heart for the God who provides families, little children, husbands and shelter, food? He provides it all. Do you have any love for him? The one who's brought you this far, who's given you life, who's lending you breath? See, love for God. Love for the God of the Bible, not just any God. Only the God of the Bible is the only one who exists. Love for him is what's going to determine where you spend forever. So cry out to him, for him to give you a love for himself. He will. 
That's what he does to every Christian. Only Christians go to heaven, you see. Only Christians have their sins forgiven. Only Christians know God. And only Christians know where they're going to go when they die. So do you. It can come any time, my friends. There's nothing more important than where you spend forever. Not your finances, not your relationships, not your, the stuff in life that you've accumulated. Nothing. There's nothing more important than where your soul spends an eternity. It's forever. And this lifetime is really short. Time is, is passing away so quick, quickly, isn't it? Time flies. You know that time flies. It wasn't five minutes ago you were a teenager in the prime of your life, and now you're old and wrinkly like me and gray-haired. Time flies. Just like the Bible says.